Well, hello everyone. It's Pastor Bramick at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church. Today is Wednesday. It's November the 16th. It's time for our daily devotion. We're in Matthew chapter 27 today. We're starting at verse 1. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us? They replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. Chief priests picked up the coins and said, It is against the law to put this into the treasury since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why it has been called a field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the prophet, oh, I'm sorry, they took the 30 silver coins, the price set for him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field as the Lord commanded them, commanded me. All right, so um, this follows on the heels of what we talked about yesterday, where Judas betrays Jesus with a kiss, and now he's having some regret. So he goes back to the religious leaders, those whom he um, consulted with about betraying Jesus, and he he in essence repents to them and you can see from their response that they have no absolution for him um they're you know they're in a state of why do we care what what is this to us and and so judas has no gospel but really he has no true repentance he he repents to the religious leaders he doesn't repent to god he doesn't repent to jesus Uh, some people raise the question well what's the difference between judas and peter since both of them betrayed jesus both of them um, don't stand by Jesus, and, and they deny Jesus. And really, the, the difference is that Peter repents to Christ later on, and, and he stays a part of the disciples, and he goes to the empty tomb, right? But he is uh, in a state of repentance towards God, towards Jesus, and, and then is later res- uh, absolved by Jesus. Judas repents to the religious leaders, and then he throws the, 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 the silver coins back into the temple. Now, that's very important because now the temple is being contaminated with this blood money. And that's part of the judgment that's going to be falling on the temple, which Jeremiah is prophesying um, in, his, uh, in his book of prophecy, that uh, he had prophesied that the temple would fall, and so it did by the Babylonians in his time. But his prophecy also extends to the time of Jesus, that the Romans will also lay siege to the temple and destroy it. And that's because the temple is now condemned. It is covered in the blood of an innocent man, as has been stated in the text. And um, you know, it, it's a place that can't continue to stand and, and receive sacrifices because uh, it, it, it's soiled. It's not holy anymore because of what's happened here. And, and Judas throwing the coins back in uh, really just cements the fact that the temple is no longer the dwelling place of God, but it's the place of these robbers, these thieves, these uh, people who betrayed the Son of God, the religious leaders, and, and have really broken the covenant, the old covenant. So Judas kills himself and... Um, you know, uh, we we know his uh, his end is not a good one. Um, the religious leaders go through with their plan, and uh, you know they are later condemned by God, and they later bring about the condemnation of of the temple and um, you know of all of that. But we know that Jesus is the new temple. Jesus is the greater temple. Jesus is the temple where the true forgiveness of sins can be found, and it's only through. Um, the presence of God that in, in that lives in the flesh of Jesus through the incarnation, that we can now go to Christ, our true high priest and our true sacrifice for sin, and that's where we find forgiveness, um, because Jesus lived a perfect life and uh, he died in complete innocence, betrayed by those who should have welcomed his coming, and so there's the irony there, uh, but because of the shedding of his blood, his innocent blood. Uh, we have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. All right, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. All right, so it's Wednesday. We have uh, youth night choir practice happening tonight at the usual time of, of 6 and 7.30 p.m. Uh, men's breakfast is happening this Saturday at 8 a.m. with the uh, elders meeting to follow. Uh, and we invite you to please join us for our the second portion of our interpretive service happening this coming Sunday here at Holy Shepherd. Uh, we'd love to see you there for that. And uh, we are looking for someone to host the church Christmas party that is scheduled to be now Friday, December the 9th. So if you have some availability, if you can uh, allow your home to be used for this uh, event, probably between 6.30 and maybe 8.30 or 9 p.m. Um, on these dates, uh, we, would love to have, uh, we would love to have a place to have our, our church Christmas party. Um, Deaconess Elizabeth is going to be doing the um, Christmas program, Sunday School Christmas program. And so there's uh, information about that in the email newsletter. Looking for volunteers, looking for kids uh, to come and to be a part of this. It's, it's been an annual tradition here at Holy Shepherd. And uh, we'd love to have uh, a good number of volunteers um, for, this, um, for this year's uh, program. Uh, we do have midweek Advent supper sign-up sheets up, or sign-up sheet, um, just outside the serving window in Nice Hall. Uh, there's one spot left on November the 30th, so please go ahead and sign up if you're interested. And then our theme this year for midweek Advent services is also going to be in the email newsletter, and it's going to be called um, the Angels of Advent. So if you uh, you know are interested in that, we invite you to come on the Wednesday nights. This is going to be November 30th, December 7th, and December 14th. Uh, here at uh, at Holy Shepherd. All right, I believe that's all the announcements I have for today. Thank you for watching our daily devotions. God bless this the rest of your day, and um, I'll see you again tomorrow for more daily devotions.